Hey everyone, I am here to talk to you today about changing your strings. something that all of us should be doing regularly and some of us are probably not doing enough of. It's also possible to do it too much. I am personally one of these people that really likes to play on new strings, so I always make sure I have fresh ones on my guitar the night before my concert or competition. And I know that some really incredible musicians disagree with me here, but uh, whether you agree or disagree, whatever your preference is, it is really important to change your strings regularly because um, it has an incredible effect on the way that your guitar sounds, on the way that you project, and uh, just on your general feeling while playing the guitar. All right, let's uh, hop right into it. So in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you my own method of string changing. This is one of many methods, and I am perfectly aware that some of you might be doing it in a very, very different way. And if that is the case, then I suggest that you write it in the comments below. How do you change your strings, and where do we differ? Where does my method differ from yours? The other thing that you might want to have uh, while you change your strings is one of these handy little uh, rotating devices. This is not obligatory. In fact, I probably only got one of those when I was about 20 years old and I had been playing guitar since the age of four. So if I managed for 16 years with, without one of these, then I'm very sure that you can do it as well. All right, so obviously the first step in changing your strings is actually taking off the old strings that you have on your instrument uh, at the beginning. Grab your twisty tool if you have one or use your wrist and start loosening the string like this. Without the tool, you can just do this. If you do have the tool, just place it on your uh, knob and start rotating. It goes a lot faster with the tool than without. So it's worthwhile. You'll see the string lose tension, become pretty loose. Uh, now at this point, you can either cut the string if you want, or I actually like to take them off nicely without cutting them too badly because you never know when in a pinch you're gonna need a set of secondhand strings. This might be not very useful for you if uh, your strings are very old. In that case, don't worry about it, just cut them. But loosen them before you cut them because if you just cut them like this, they will damage your instrument, uh, they will fly off, they can even injure you. So uh, loosen them first and then start uh, removing the strings. In the case of the sixth string, it's really easy to just pull it off of here. Um, but in the case of the other string, sometimes it's easier to start at this end and it's really a simple movement that you have to do you just release the string this way and then gently take it down. If you can do so without damaging the varnish on your instrument, that's great. I like to hold it here behind the bridge with my other hand just so that it doesn't scratch the guitar. It's not too big a deal if it does get scratched. As you can see, my guitar is, is scratched there. Uh, but I try to be nice wherever I can. Uh, don't stick a big pair of scissors in there. You might risk damaging the guitar. And don't just pull it out because you'll get these uh, this, these whip markers on, on, on your instrument. So just be nice to it. Um, it's actually really easy to remove these strings. So we'll just repeat the process for the entire set of basses. We'll do this uh, twice more. And what I actually like to do is to save time, I usually just take them off of here without cutting them because I just don't wanna unwrap it all the way using the uh, twisty tool. So I prefer to just take them down on this end like I've shown you by just loosening it and taking the string out like this. This frees up uh, one of the ends. Same thing with the other string, the, third, the fourth string, take it off. And then this is actually a lot faster if you have them out here just to sort of unwrap them this way. Usually faster than using the twisty tool or using your hands. All right, and that's it. You've removed the bases. Um, these little tricks that I'm teaching you are not very important. You can cut them, you can do anything you want. Just, I've changed so many sets of strings in my life that uh, I feel like even gaining five minutes when doing it is a pretty material increase of my uh, free time <laughs> resulting from this. All right, it's time to put the strings on. So let's unpack them, get a nice unboxing video here. And a lot of uh, brands will package some strings together. Uh, usually you just want to get them out of the box and 
These ones, for example, have the first and the fourth string in one envelope, followed by the second and the fifth, and then the third and the sixth. Um, it's not universal, just figure out the correct string. I'm gonna start with the fourth string here. So, put these ones aside and open the envelope. Uh, there will be two strings inside, one treble and one bass string. And obviously the fourth string is a bass string. So, I will uh, take it out of the bag and unravel it. Um, it's uh, really fun to do this. All right. And then you'll notice two ends on the string. And this is where some manufacturers start getting creative. You'll notice that some of them have these little ends that are uh, somehow different from the other end. They can either have these uh, little hairs sticking out or they can have a different color. I actually don't like using those gimmicks personally. I like to use the regular end. Almost all the strings will have one regular end and one gimmicky end. Um, and so this gimmicky thing is supposed to help you pull them through the hole on the right side of the guitar. But I personally find that more difficult. So I prefer to just use the basic end personally and leave this end for the other side, okay? Uh, up to you again, personal preference. So uh, at this point, what you have to do is you have to grab the end of the string. You have to look at your guitar. My guitar has a single hole for every string. Some instruments, like I said, have two holes next to each other, and uh, they are meant to help you tie a knot more easily. If that is the case with your instrument, look at the hole through which the other strings are pulled and make sure that you use the same hole for the new strings you're putting on. Basically, if uh, your other strings are uh, placed into the hole on the right, make sure that you are uh, placing the new strings also in the hole on the right. If your other strings are placed in the hole on the left, then uh, use the hole on the left for the new strings too. You don't have to worry about this if you have a single hole, like in the case of my guitar. All right, the next step is to start putting on some of these strings. And we're going to begin here in the center of our instrument, grabbing the non-gimmicky regular end of the string and uh, placing it through the appropriate hole. Once it has been placed inside, we will have to create a knot around it. So my favorite knot for the bass strings goes up towards my face, around the string, down towards the ground, and then back, like this. All right. All right, once you got the string here, you are going to have to pull it through the loop between the string and the bridge. And it's really important at this point that you do this behind the bridge on this side of the bridge and not in front of it here. So I'm gonna show you the correct way to do it, which is to pull it in like this and to hold it behind the bridge. The incorrect way to do it would be to hold it on top of the bridge. This is really the only, the only part of this video where you can really mess it up if you don't pay attention. So just make sure you're not above the bridge, always behind the bridge, okay? So after you have placed the string through the loop, you have to hold it, I like to hold it with my right hand, hold it in place while you pull the string out. And at this point, there's many ways to do it. I like to make sure that the space left here on the string behind it is not too large. If you have a lot of slack, that's not a problem. You can always go back and cut that end after the fact but I have changed enough strings in my life to know how to adjust it, which is basically from this loop here, you can adjust how much of the string is left over. Totally fine, if you don't wanna do this, if you wanna leave a long string out, you can always cut it later, uh, but I like to adjust it so that very, very little of the string, this much of the string is left. And at that point, I can just pull it from the other side, okay? Now, when you look at this, you might still be unhappy with the length of the string. Personally, I think this is still too long for me, so I can go in, you know, now it's a little tighter, so it will just hold on its own, and I can grab a little bit more, pull it out a little more, tighten a little more. It's really just a process of trial and error. Uh, as long as the string loop stays behind the bridge, you will be fine. 
The only thing that you cannot allow to happen at this point is for this uh, end of the string to be here on top of the bridge. If you do that, when you tighten the string, it will escape. The string will not be tightened at this end. It will escape. It will leave a big mark here on the back of your guitar and you'll have to do the whole process again. So it really sucks. Just make sure that as you tighten, this uh, loop happens behind the bridge. Now, you might notice looking at this string that it doesn't look exactly like your final finished string used to look on the guitar. Namely, these lines here are not fully parallel. When you look at your regular strings, you might remember that this part here and that part there were perfectly parallel. This will happen through tightening. It is fine if one of the uh, lines created by the string is more straight than the other and the other one is a little curved, that's okay. That's part of the process. You don't actually need to tighten them up from here. Once you start twisting the knob, you will uh, tighten them automatically. You don't have to worry about this. At this stage, I am confident this is a tight enough string for my taste and I can start putting it on at the other end and increasing the tension. All right, now it's time to put the string into its place on the other side of the guitar and start tightening it. For this, um, you might notice that the hole on this end of the guitar, the hole in the bony mechanism of the instrument is not properly lined up, in which case you can start twisting the knob until you get it into a position that makes it easy for you to insert the string inside. I like to get it all the way out so I can see the hole from my angle personally. So as you can see, I've lined up this hole here and uh, you should probably do the same for all the other holes. As you can see in my case, they happen to already be lined up at the beginning so no change needed there, but this will make it easier for you to stick the end of the string in there. And I personally like to stick the end of the string from the top and pulling from the other side. Great, very simple. I've placed it inside the hole. Then let's lift the guitar up and look at it from this side. Here's the part where everybody has a different solution. What I like to do here is personally just to give the string an extra loop. This is enough to not cause it to slip. So I like to just pull the string back into the front like this. And then instead of leaving it here, I just go around the existing string once. That's it. Just one time around the existing string and that will create enough friction to not allow the string to, to slip. At this point, the only thing you have to make sure of if you are using this method is that this stays tight while you rotate the knob. So for this, I like to use my other hand and just grab the little knot that's been made there. It's literally just grabbing in order for this not to come undone. In this position, you can start simply rotating the knob, whether you do it with your hand or with one of these tools, but make sure you're rotating it the correct way. The correct way from, for the basis is counterclockwise. Okay, counterclockwise. Start rotating it, and you can actually get quite fast here. And you will notice that the knot will start slipping from under your hand. That is perfectly fine. Uh, you can simply make sure that this doesn't come out too far if you want to hold it with your other hand. It takes a while to get a hand of this to really feel comfort co comfortable doing it, but it's actually quite easy. And if you have to try it a couple of times, that's okay. So in this position now, this end of the string cannot slip away from my guitar. And my right hand is holding the string on both sides. So my left hand is free to start twisting. So let's do it. I actually loosen it just a little bit just a little bit. And then I pay attention to where the string goes here. And I want the fourth string usually to be on this side of the string. See how I pulled it onto the bottom side. So now I'm going to hold it in place and not allow it to slip on the other side. This way I'm going to create these really nice regular looking uh, string wounds on the guitar tuning mechanism. So yeah, I like to think about this, but you don't have to. It's fine if you don't. Um, what is going to become important though is that as you tighten the string, you place it in the appropriate uh, in the appropriate opening here. Don't let it slip here. Make sure you're in the fourth string opening. And from this point on, you literally just twist. It's this is the fun part of changing strings. Start twisting, increasing the pressure, 
and then you're gonna have to uh, you're gonna have the ability to start making some uh, noise, some notes, some noise. Don't worry about them being perfectly in tune. Don't waste your time. Your work will be uh, for nothing in just a couple of seconds to a couple of minutes after you do it. Um, what I also like to do at this stage is make sure that I have unraveled this string here. Sometimes it gets a little stuck, and especially if you have a lot of slack on the string, it can get annoying and it can cause buzzes. Some people opt to just leave the strings out, the long strings out. Even in that case though, you do have to make sure that it's not touching the rest of the string. So use your hand and just grab this out. Make sure it doesn't uh, interfere with the rest of your string. As you pull, you will notice that you can get pretty close to the hole. This is, I think, a good final position for the string to be in. Don't let this twisty portion be very long. It's just a waste of string and it can cause some buzzes later. Um, just make sure that you are uh, tightening it up at the end for everything to work um, as, as well as possible. Now, if you have one of these more advanced twisting tools, some of them have a string cutter at the end. This one that I've been using so far doesn't. It's just a twist mechanism. This one though, it has this little thing at the end that functions like a pair of scissors. You can catch the string in there and you can cut it. The advantage of this is that you can take it on a plane if you are not checking in luggage and it's not a pair of scissors, so you should be allowed with this on the plane. And it's also a little safer. You see how it's blunt at the end, it's round. It won't scratch your guitar uh, as you cut the string. So I like to cut the end of the string but in your case, if you've not done this before, it might be worthwhile to wait a little bit longer just to make sure that the string is properly placed and that it's not gonna slip out before you cut it uh, because you don't want to lose that extra string material if you're gonna have to put it back on the guitar later. In my case, I know I've put it on correctly so I can just cut it. And for this, I'm gonna grab the end of the string and I'm gonna place this inside like that. And I'm just going to close and the string has been cut. You can also use a regular pair of scissors, totally fine. After you've finished placing the fourth string on the guitar, again, the order is up to you. I don't have a specific preference there. Uh, check from time to time, every couple of minutes, what the tuning is like. For example, it's gone down about one semitone from the correct tuning. Just kind of adjust it. Obviously, the better the ear, the easier it will be for you to uh, put this on, but you can absolutely use a tuner for this. Don't worry about that. All right, so we are just going to be repeating the same process for the other two bass strings. The trebles are a little different, just a tiny bit more complicated, uh, but uh, for the basses, it's basically just this. the sixth string, it might be a little hard to get it through the hole on this side, so I actually like to bend it first. I just pre-bend a little bit around my thumb, just kind of like this, causing this little angle here, and that makes it a lot easier to pull it through the hole. I then use this little L shape to make my way inside. And now that all the basses are on the guitar, it is time to do another tuning check. You can do these as often as you want, as your strings will go out of tune a lot during this process. All right, they're more or less in tune at this point. So we are going to continue with the trebles. The first step is obviously to get the existing trebles off and uh, the process is exactly the same. These trebles on my guitar are very old, so I know I'm not gonna need them, meaning that once I have loosened the strings, I can just cut them, get them all in there. Bye-bye strings. So let's remove them from this side. And 
And now let's remove them from the other side. Again, I did not twist all the way up until the end because it's faster to pull them out manually like this without the twisty tool. All right. Now, for putting on the trebles, there are a couple of extra precautions that we must take. The reason for that is that the trebles are smooth. They don't have this silver around the, around the core of the string that helps with friction. So it is basically more dangerous that treble strings might slip out. So let's get into it. What are the special precautions that you must take for treble strings? The answer is that we will begin by making a knot on the right side of the string, the side that goes into the bridge. But it is much easier to first pull the string through the hole as we have done for the bass strings. And only once this end is already there inside, that's when we will do our knot. So with the string through the hole, it is time to make the simplest knot in the history of knots. We're literally just going to uh, pull the end of the string through an own loop. Basically just this. Simplest knot in the history of knots. All right. Now the easy way to do this is to just not care where the knot happens. You can just do this, pull it tight, and then once it's tight enough, you cut the end. Over the years, I've actually learned uh, how to position the knot at the very end of the string. And it's all got to do with how you hold it between your thumb and middle finger. Don't waste your time trying to do this if it's not something that you can already do without thinking about it. Uh, in my case, I end up not cutting these uh, strings usually because I can make the knot be just at the end of the string. But that's a skill that is you know, of questionable use for the rest of your life. Now, with the knot here, I'm going to uh, basically make the same movement as on the bass strings, but with an extra loop. So let me explain what that means. I will begin the knot in the same way, first towards my face, then around the string, then towards the ground. And this is what we did with the bass strings. We just had them in here. But as an extra protection here, I actually like to go around the string once more, just in case many treble strings have slipped on my guitars over the years. So I just like to be extra careful and I'm taking two redundant safety measures, the knot and the extra loop. So from this position, which would be the regular loop for the bass strings, I'm just gonna take it around the string once more, like this, around the string. That's it, one time, just one time around is enough. Okay, not multiple times or you will become, it will become too long, the knot will not fit anymore. Okay, so from this point on, the exact same principle applies as for the bases. Do not let this loop be in front of the bridge. It has to be behind the bridge. If you make it in front of the bridge, it will slip and you will damage your guitar, okay? So I'm gonna pull it tightly, but carefully so that the, 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 the loop stays behind the bridge as I've just explained. All right, now as you can see, this is not tight enough. I want the knot to be right at the end of where my string is. So I can pull from the loop a little bit closer just to make sure that I am tightening it in the correct place like that. Ideally, the knot should not touch your guitar. You see, it doesn't touch my guitar and it should be pretty tight. All right, so uh, we're going to follow the same process as before and now tighten it over to the other side I will bring the tuning mechanism here in front of me so I can see them better. And as you might be able to see in the overhead camera, the hole is not aligned properly. So I will start moving the tuning mechanism to align the hole with where I can see it. And once I get to that position, I am happy and I can put the string through the hole just like previously explained. All right, at this point, we're basically going to follow the method from the basis, pulling the string up to the top. And then what I like to do as an extra precaution here is I like to do two loops. Where I had one loop before, I can do two loops. It's not necessary on these strings personally because they are quite thick, so um, one should be fine at this point. But if you're using carbon strings, maybe for the first one, you might wanna do that. 
it's up to you. I'm not gonna do it on this one just to show you that you don't have to, but um, yeah, consider doing as many loops as you, as you want. So at this point, some people like to take a certain shortcut, which is pulling the end, the loose end of the string, and shortening the length of the, of the usable part of the string. And this has the advantage that if you do this, you only have to twist a couple of times and the string is in tune, which is, it, it, it is an advantage, don't get me wrong. You save some time and you might have an easier time staying in tune after. But um, the disadvantage is that you're losing all of this string material, which is valuable. You paid for this entire string and you're basically throwing it away. Um, the reason why this is important on the treble strings specifically is that they tend to get scratchy much faster than the bass strings, in my experience at least. That means that after you've been playing them for a while, you will create these little grooves on the string and you will hear this in the, the sound. The sound will have this fsht, fsht, fsht noise at the beginning of every note. And in addition, it's gonna be bad for your nails. Your nails will go bad faster if you're using old strings. So um, what I like to do with treble strings personally is if I need new strings and I don't have a whole new set or I just wanna save money and don't wanna pay for a whole new set to be placed onto my guitar, I loosen the strings, just the treble strings, and I move them over from, let's say, this position. I move them over to something like this changing the place where I play with my right hand on the string. This will get rid of the scratchy sound. It will protect my nails. It's basically a way to sort of get some of the benefits of having new strings without paying for them. Uh, so for me, this hack is really important. I really want this extra slack here at the end so that I can loosen the string and move it over if I need to do so before a concert without paying for an extra set. If you don't care about it, if you just wanna do the fastest thing uh, possible, then you can feel free to shorten it by pulling on the loose end. And from this point, you can just start creating tension on the string. But I personally take that extra time. I leave this on like this, and I only leave a very short string at the end of it here. All right, so once you've got your loop here, the only thing you need to do is pull the guitar back up and start twisting. And again, I like to pay attention here to where my string goes. So I'm going to place it in this groove right away and start tensing it up there. You see, the extra twisting is not a problem at all if you have one of these machines. It literally just takes you 10 extra seconds and you earn an extra bit of string. But if you have to do it manually, then I understand taking the shortcut. It makes a little bit more sense in that situation. Okay, so once I got it in a good spot, I'm just gonna go in, perform the cut. My end of my string is gone. And I will now proceed to retune the guitar accordingly. If you've gone very far, you can use the tool again. At this point, by the way, the basses that you put on a couple of minutes ago are going to be very far out of tune. These are supposed to be the same note, right? One octave apart. So always perform regular tuning checks. But don't waste your time trying to get it perfectly because your strings will go down over time no matter what you do. Don't waste time trying to get it in the middle of the tuner. Okay, so now that we've learned how to do it on the trebles, let's just apply this method for the second and first string and let's finish changing our strings. All right, and that's it. You've got a whole new set of strings on your guitar. Did you catch me using my teeth to tighten the knot on the right side? If you did, that's one of the tricks that I don't necessarily encourage everybody to use, but uh, if, you, if you wish to do it, then uh, I would not be able to blame you. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that you've not allowed your strings to slip on either side. If it does happen though, don't beat yourself up. 
For me, one of the consequences of starting to play the guitar when I was four years old means that I was a child when I learned all of these things. And as a child, I've messed it up so many times that I can't even count. So um, you will be fine. Even if you make a mark on your guitar, uh, it's going to be okay. But if you follow these steps that I've outlined here, then you should A, correctly change your strings, B, not damage your guitar, three, have some extra slack if you want to move the treble strings around to get rid of the scratchiness without buying a new set, and D, just hopefully done it in a way that uh, was not too time consuming or annoying. I don't think I remember the last time that I changed strings without watching YouTube or TV at the same time, so um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a relatively boring activity, but hopefully applying these tricks can make it a little more fun and a little faster. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Mircea Gogoncha. I am head of guitar at Tonebase. And if you like this, then you should check out my other tutorials on the site. I've done a couple of hundred live streams on there and a lot of individual lessons and courses on various topics from gear to technique and musicianship. It's all on there. So uh, give it a shot. Uh, hope you've enjoyed this and see you around Tonebase.